Hi, Alan Stratton here from CostMatters.com. Today's economic environment is constantly changing. While a lot of press is devoted to the global recession, reality is that the competitive environment for any business is constantly changing. Even within the business's own product portfolio, products are at different points in their life cycle. And with product life cycles constantly and dramatically shortening, how do managers cope, make money, and grow? Well, one risk to avoid is the death spiral. Like a whirlpool, once a business is caught in its current, it is increasingly difficult to get out and can be fatal once sucked into its center. Like a whirlpool encountered while swimming or canoeing on a river, avoiding its grasp altogether is the best strategy. However, in business, we may find ourselves caught in a death spiral before we even recognize that we are near it. Unlike the river whirlpool, information, not physical strength, is key to escaping its swirls and avoiding death. What is the death spiral in business? How do we recognize it and how do we escape it? One point to remember, businesses do not set prices. The market sets prices. We as business managers delude ourselves when we publish a price list in thinking that we set the price. In reality, if the price is too high, customers find their products elsewhere or substitute something else. If our price is too high, competitors will enter in the market and undercut our price. If our price is too low, we may get more sales but not make the profit that we deserve. So in reality, the market is indeed setting the price. We as managers can only decide whether we want to play the game. If the proper profit opportunity is large enough, we play the game with our product and our resources. We're rewarded, the winning, by the resulting profit. If the profit is too small, we can, and actually should, use our resources in other markets. In effect, to play a different game. In evaluating whether we want to play the game, we look at profits. That's our scorecard. In the end, profit is the price minus the cost to provide the product. The market sets the price and our cost structure sets the cost. The difference is our reward or penalty for a misstatement. But cost is not always easily determined. The difficulty comes in our fixed costs. Fixed costs result from large investments and or long-term commitments. A production facility is indeed a large investment and information technology infrastructure is a combination of investments and long-term commitments. The cost of management also is in effect a long-term commitment to the effective management of the company. None of these and other costs can be reduced quickly if the market demand drops. For sake of this example, let's look at only the fixed costs. Let's reduce our price by the variable costs and use the difference or net margin as our price. Now our price is the money intended to cover fixed costs and to provide a profit. Let's assume that our net price after variable costs is $2. Our fixed costs are 1.5 million and our sales volume is 1 million units. At this point, the unit cost is $1.50. Therefore, our profit is 50 cents, $2 minus $1.50. Great, we're making money. Now, market conditions change due to factors beyond our control in this case. Our sales volume drops to 750,000 units. Since fixed costs do not change, we divide our fixed cost by the new volume to find our unit cost, or now, $2. Now we're only breaking even. No profit here. Now, thinking that we control the price and that we need to have a profit to provide a return on our investment, we raise the price to $2.50. And we congratulate ourselves on still making the same unit profit as in previous periods. Now, however, the market has a different spin on things. The market does not agree with our new price. 
customers fill their needs elsewhere and our sales volume drops again now to 500,000 units. At this level, dividing our fixed cost of 1.5 million by 500,000 units results in a unit cost of $3. We're now losing money and have to react. Again, thinking that we control the price, we calculate what it will take to again make a 50 cent profit per unit. Never mind that the 50 cents per unit is at a reduced volume and now will only be 250,000 when it was 500,000. So, we raise our price again, this time to $3.50 per unit. We're a bit nervous about the profit decline, but we're still hopeful and confident in our forecast. But of course, in reality, the market is still in control. Despite our world-class sales force, despite our world-class customer service, customers are deserting in droves, seeking better pricing elsewhere. Sales volume drops again, this time to 250,000 units, and profit drops to a loss now of 625,000. We're caught in the whirlpool. We are in the death spiral. And obviously at this point, further price increases will only accelerate our demise. What went wrong? What should we have done? First, we should have recognized that our capacity is for 1 million units. As volume declines, we have unused capacity and therefore unused capacity cost. Our product is the same. Its real cost has not changed despite our calculations. As our volume drops, we have increasing excess capacity. And instead of loading the cost of excess capacity on the unit cost of our good products and deluding ourselves that the market will pay us for this capacity, we need to find other markets in which we can use the capacity or sell the capacity to somebody else that can profit from it. Until sold as product, as capacity or as otherwise reduced, the cost of this excess capacity must fall to the business's bottom line. Here, it then will get appropriate attention to determine the best course of action. A death spiral is dangerous, but can be avoided by first recognizing the role of capacity in the business and its cost. Then we must manage the excess capacity appropriately. Now, the worst alternative the worst alternative is to simply load it onto product cost and blindly raise prices. Business decisions in this environment are not simple, not easily defined, and do not have clear alternatives. This is where managers must really earn their pay. So what's your experience with the death spiral in your company or others? Please share it in the space below. When cost matters, profits soar. I'm Alan Stratton from costmatters.com and thank you.